War really is cruel, don't you agree? Whether you win or not, you always lose more than you gain. The victor can still console themselves by counting their gains, but the defeated can only count everything they've lost, the allies they failed, the dead enemies, and the crimes of war. All of it weighs heavily upon them. They wonder what they even fought for, and whether there was any point in paying the price, sullying their hands, you know? There's no point to it all. No matter whether you win or not, no matter what you've been able to protect or even what you lose, there's no meaning to war. Glorify it all you want, but it's a pointless exercise that only leaves behind corpses and sins. There's nothing worth going that far to protect, believe me. If there is anything, it's the will to create a world free of such senseless crap. By fighting oneself instead of taking on the enemy. And that... Will still isn't dead yet. Not as long as there are others who still carry the torch. If I may be permitted to give my opinion once more. Our strategic HQ is truly a bastion of logic. A fortress of knowledge. You could even call it a think tank. It's because of this that you've all come to believe the war is at its end. Because it's the only rational conclusion given the circumstances. But, you see, that sort of thinking ignores one critical component of war. Our chief strategists are far too rational. In a way, it makes them blind to the real world. And thus, they've completely overlooked something crucial. Rationalism and pragmatism are not the only things that drive human actions. At our cores, we are all still foolish creatures. You're suggesting that humans are merely beasts? That we're still slaves to our baser instincts without care for logic? I hate to be the one who has to tell you this, Lieutenant Colonel. But what you just said is exactly right. Preposterous. What evidence do you have? Knowledge of history. Though I guess I really mean my own history. My own personal experiences and memories. I have seen hatred personified. It burned in the eyes of a man promising retribution no matter what the cost. I have seen the moment when a talented soldier lost all reason and gave himself over to anger. I have witnessed countless acts of vengeance. They were driven by fury. And so I've realized something during this war. <laughs> no, perhaps it would be more appropriate to say I remembered something that I'd forgotten. That I have personally experienced the irrationalism of humanity. I know what happens when emotions make someone unreasonable. No matter how much we believe we've modernized. No matter what social constructions we pledge to live by, humans continue to be foolish creatures. We think we're so advanced, but when pushed, we still prioritize emotion over logic. When a human being's overcome with hatred, they'll keep fighting without concern for self-interest or reason, regardless of what they might stand to gain or lose. A knight cannot save the world. Knights call certain methods of fighting good, and others evil acting as if there were some sacred nobility to the battlefield. Such illusions created by heroes throughout history have led countless young men to their bloody deaths, all for the sake of this glory and honor they all extol. They are not illusions! Even the taking of a life in battle, as an act of a human being, must have ideals! Otherwise every war would bring the very fires of hell to this world! And there you go. You heard her, Irie. Our heroic spirit over there considers a battlefield to be better than hell. What a joke. A battlefield is hell itself. There's no hope to be had on one. There is nothing but unspeakable despair, just a soulless crime we call victory, paid for by the pain of the defeated. But humanity has never recognized this truth. And the reason is that in every era, a dazzling hero has blinded the people with their legends and kept them from seeing the evil of bloodshed they bring. True human nature has not advanced a step beyond the Stone Age. It doesn't matter what I want, because I can't do a damn thing about it. You're a good person. I hope you'll get to live a long life. Every day I've spent here, I've wondered, how did all these people let it come to this? Minds and bodies ruined, dreams of freedom erased, personalities burned away. No one would want to go to war if they knew what it would do to them. But it's not like we all leapt into that hell knowingly. Most of us were pushed. Some of us were pushed by other people. And some of us were pushed by the environments we grew up in. 
So, the few who do choose to leap into hell see it differently than the rest. And they're also able to see something beyond the hell. Maybe that something is hope. Or maybe it's just another hell. Fact is, you can only find out by moving forward. The truth is, the more precious someone is to us, the harder it is for us to accept that they might die. Times you actually convince yourself there's no way they could die. This naivete can't be helped, especially with a generation like yours. A generation that does not know war. You might try to find meaning in war, but all there is is loss and unbearable pain. War inflicts death, injury, and pain on everyone. Oh, that senseless death. It unleashes a cycle of violence and hatred that never ends. War creates only more war. It almost feels like someone set it all up. Like it was all the work of an actual god.